Investors, welcome to the month of May, a month that will very likely follow the same patterns as April. But let's table all the macros and stock ideas for today and join me for a monthly dividend income check-in. Whereas I'm going to run through my entire portfolio with you, give you all the dividend stocks that paid me out a dividend during the month of April, and then conclude by giving you a glimpse into my dividend tracker so you can see just how powerful dividend investing can be. With that, are you ready? So let's get going here with a big overview before we kick into gear with all the dividend paychecks. As of the recording of this video, my account's sitting at $153,054.08, which is certainly not at the highs of a couple of months ago. But heck, with all that's going on in the world, from the scares of the last inflationary report to interest rates remaining elevated, wage growth data not looking so hot, and just all eyes remaining on the Middle East, or at least at this point, the new war front, college campuses, let's just say it's going to take a minute, a long minute for all of our portfolios to giddy up and commence a bullish climb, which is just to say that I'm not really worried and I remain steadfast and focused on my process, which is about investing into high quality companies for the long term while trimming down my portfolio to actually getting my portfolio down to about 10 individual stock holdings and about two to three ETFs. Right now, I'm actually holding those three ETFs from the Vanguard Total Stock Market Index Fund, VTI. VGT, which is the Vanguard Tech Fund, and VTSAX, which is just like VTI. Now, as for my holdings, there are 17 of them currently, so I'm almost down to that 10 count goal, but let's now get into what we are all here for, the April dividend income that I am just stoked about because I'm breaking new records come the end of the year. Regardless, if you're new here, it's not all about the tickers and how much these stocks paid me. I'm going to go ahead and deliver through on sharing with you my opinions on each of these companies and more importantly, whether or not they're a buy for the long long term for you. With that, dividend stock number one, Coca-Cola, ticker symbol KO, which is our beverage behemoth that I own not so much for growth, but rather reliability and stability for obvious reasons, thanks to such an iconic drink creating a moat-worthy company. Now, it has been having a heck of a year as the masses of investors flock to safer investments and overall sales have been strong as well. Not too surprising there. However, if you're interested in buying Coca-Cola right now, I'd actually say hold off. As we could see, we're up on the year by almost 6% with Coca-Cola trading for around $61 per share. That's near a 52-week high. Yet if you are a buyer for Coca-Cola for the long haul, perhaps it's worth the investment here, 110% worth of share price appreciation over the last decade. And as for analysts, they are still foreseeing upside to come with the stock hitting $66.50 per share, all while hedge funds have certainly been loading up on Coca-Cola as well last quarter as the stock was a bit cheaper. Personally, I'm going to be sitting tight with my 26 shares for now, which allowed me to receive $12.34 thanks to the Coca-Cola dividend yield coming in at 3.13%. Now, investors, if you're not a fan of Coca-Cola, the drink or the stock, chances are you're more of a Pepsi investor, to which my second dividend paycheck came in from Pepsi, ticker symbol PEP, also a beverage kingpin, but also doubling as a salty snack leader as well, giving Pepsi shareholders all the more avenues worth of stability thanks to all of that diversification. And because of that additional snack segment, I don't think it's really ever fair to compare Pepsi to Coca-Cola because that would be playing more of the apples to oranges game, but that's neither here nor there. Now, I got invested into Pepsi when the stock faltered due to their weight loss product line not going so hot. I swung into the position, so I no longer hold it as of this recording, but I was there to capture the return and, of course, then reallocate the capital elsewhere. But for those of you inquiring about the investment, right now. We can actually see that it is certainly back on the mend. It's up on the year by almost 4% at this point in time. Now, I scored it around that $162 mark, but zoom out here to see over 173% worth of share price appreciation this past decade, making Pepsi a solid buy and hold opportunity. Now, while I personally sold, I do think, again, it's worth the hold for the long term. I owned 11 shares when I owned it. I received $13.92, thanks to that dividend coming in at 3.09%. Now, very similar to Coca-Cola. Analysts are also forecasting
forecasting upside here with the share price hitting $191.25 per share. That's just about 10% worth of upside. Now, investors, just before I continue, I actually want to go ahead and share with you that it's important more now than ever to join me on this financial freedom journey by subscribing. So you're going to get all the weekly dividend stock ideas on top of all the need to know urgent macro news bites. And while you're at it, I do want to ask that you tap on that thumbs up button for me. It just keys me into whether or not you're interested in content like this. And if that's the case and you hit that thumbs up button, I just keep creating more content just like this for you. With that, let's go ahead and get back to it with Medtronic, ticker symbol MDT. It's a medical technology and device company that has come back on the radar for many of us dividend investors. After sliding this past week, currently trading for just $80 per share. Now that fell from around that peak of around $87 per share. And if you're asking why, well, Medtronic is really the type of company that actually would be heavily impacted in our economic environment right now. And you see that's because hospitals and medical care facilities are really scaling back on major purchases. But on the other hand, Medtronic is in fact the company producing essential healthcare technology, talking about like pacemakers, blood analyzers, to glucose readers for diabetics, and just a plethora of other very necessary medical technologies, meaning they built themselves a fat moat, which is why we see Medtronic over the last decade up by 72%. And analysts who remain very bullish on the company with over 16% worth of upside expected, bringing that share price up to $94 per share. All on top of hedge funds, check this out now, spending millions upon millions of dollars into Medtronic for a long-term investment. Now, personally, I am not a buyer of Medtronic at this point in time. And you see, that is because I'm more focused on growth-oriented positions right now. That's just based on my age and my investment timeline. However, Medtronic is a solid buy for those of you who are interested in more reliability. I own 25 shares. I received $17.94 thanks to that dividend yield coming in at 3.41%. Next up, I had an even fatter paycheck come in from everyone's go-to monthly dividend stock, Realty Income, ticker symbol O, which has fared, well, not so well whatsoever in our current economic environment, but it remains a top pick for me, especially now as rates will eventually come down. And I project when rates come down, that's when we're going to get a takeoff with ability income. But for now, just note that the company is actually the industry leader when it comes to net lease solutions with a portfolio of more than 15,000 properties spanning across all 50 states and abroad as well. The company leases those properties to over 1,300 clients, making for an absolute real estate juggernaut. And at a solid buy in price right now trading for $53 per share, ultimately down by 4.2% on the year. Zoom out with me right now to see just about 102% worth of appreciation over the last decade. And will it continue to ramp up that portfolio? Very likely, but it will require rates to come back down, which is what we're all waiting for. Analysts are surely agreeing with me here with over 11% worth of upside expected. Realty income to hit $60 per share, at least as they see it. As for me, I own 113 shares. That allowed me to receive a nice little $29.32 paycheck from Realty Income. So thank you for the rent. Now that's all because of that dividend yield coming in at 5.6%. 72%. And then to close out the entire month, well, I got a nice little kickback, $40.30 worth of a dividend from just having my money in a settlement fund with Vanguard, which is to say, please just don't have your money in your bank saving account. You're losing money. But all in all, the grand total for April came in at $113.82, to which I want to jump into that dividend tracker with you as promised. So you could see here that as we plug in our April total, we nearly doubled last year's April total. And more importantly, we're already sitting on nearly $750 this year in dividends, as I also increase my monthly average, as you could see there at the bottom. So for doing absolutely nothing, yours truly collected over $100. And that's just the sheer power of dividend investing. Now, I certainly want to know your total income when it comes to dividends this past month. So drop those comments down below. Feel free to just let me know your thoughts on my dividend strategy or the dividend stocks that I presented if you have better ones in mind, or whatever it is that you want to share with all of us, definitely be sure to hit that subscribe button to join the journey or go ahead and click into this video right here for more insights now.